So, okay, that's the security disabled, which we'll need from Linux, for Linux from scratch anyway. So we're going to now try and um, boot from the USB stick, which, as we've already seen, it does actually work. So let's just restart the machine. McAfee's trying to re reload again. I'll just ignore that. And I'm holding down my F12 to get the boot menu up. And yep, there it is, preparing one time boot menu. So I need to boot the USB stick, which is the SanDisk, press enter, and here it is booted again. So what we've got here is several options. We can actually install Debian from this live CD or live live image, which is not what we want to do. Um, uh, to boot the live image, we've got these top two options to boot it directly, or you can select localization support. So let's do that one because if you're, you you have a different language other than English, you can select that here, and the rest of the boot will uh, carry on in that language. So I'll stick with the English because obviously that's my language, and this will boot. Now bear in mind this will be a little bit sluggish, a little bit slow when you're using it because it's, well if it's off a CD or a DVD it will be especially slow because it's got to access the um, drive and they're quite slow. USB sticks will be a little bit faster but they'll still be a little bit sluggish, not as fast as a hard disk. So just bear that in mind and um, especially with the USB because you can't hear anything clicking around or moving or anything. With a, with a CD, if you click on something and it's not working on screen, generally you can hear the head moving or the, the disc spinning up. With a USB stick, as as now, is a black screen with a cursor and it wasn't doing anything, but it obviously was. It just took a little, little bit of time, so just have a little bit of patience with it. So as you can see, we've got a desktop. There's an installed Debian link there, which we won't be touching. Um, We've got our language set down here, which is quite nice, although it's English US, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, this little symbol here shows that we've got the USB plugged in. Don't touch that, don't inject the disk, not while, because we're running off the, the USB stick or the DVD, so don't touch that. Um, one other thing I men haven't mentioned, should mention, is please connect to the internet with a wired connection. Don't bother with um, wireless. With the Linux from scratch installation, there's no facility for connecting to the internet um, with wireless with the default installation instructions. You have to move on to the Beyond the Linux from Scratch, which is like the supplementary part of Linux from Scratch where you install all sorts of other packages. Um, wireless can be a little bit complicated, a little bit involved. Uh, whereas a wired connection, the only problem you may have is whether the, the hardware is detected or not. Other than that, you don't need to worry about passwords or access points and keys and all all that palaver. It's a lot, lot simpler with a wired connection. So um, if you're currently on a wireless, um, please try and uh, connect to a, a wired connection. Otherwise, you will have problems later on. Um, in, in fact, when Linux from scratch, when we're completing the installation, you just won't have internet access if you have a, a wireless connection at the moment. Although it'll work for the installation, you won't have uh, any sort of network connection when you boot into Linux from scratch. So if you're happy with that, that's okay. You just be very restricted after that. Um, as, you, as I say, you won't have wireless. So now's probably the time to configure your, your network interface. Um, we've got a few applications already installed. There's, there's even a complete office suite here with LibreOffice, but um, uh, we won't worry too much about that. So what we've got to do now is to prepare the disk for um, our Linux from scratch installation. Now, 
there are two ways we could possibly do this. I don't know if there's a program G parted. No, that's not on here. Okay, so we won't do that. We'll have to do it the uh, manual way. No, it's not on there. Which is not a problem because that's the way the book describes it. It's just that I do it in a slightly different order from what the book says, but we can um, go through the book and see that. So, first of all, if you start again from the menu, let me start, start from scratch and go to applications and type in Firefox. You should find there's a link there to Firefox that appears. And just load that up. As I say, bear in mind it takes a little bit longer than usual. And the other program we'll need at the moment is called um, Console. That's spelt with a K, K-O-N-S-O-L-E. And this is our command line that we're going to be putting all the commands in. So the next thing we need to do is to make the font bigger on here. It's quite a small font. So I'm going to go into settings, edit current profile, click on tab. I'm just going to increase the text size to 15. Be nice and big so it's also easier to read as well on the video. I'll just click OK on that and you'll see that it's got a lot bigger so consequently we haven't got as many characters in the screen uh, width wise or height wise for that matter which can cause a problem with some programs so we'll just drag this as you drag it you'll see it's got a size that comes up and we want to make the first number 80 at least 80 the second doesn't matter so much but the first one it needs to be 80 or more so I'm just going to set it to 80 um, in fact I think I'm going to just knock this down a little bit to 14 instead of 15 just so I can nudge this over a little bit more okay and now with the Firefox I'm just going to put this next to it. Just grab that corner and what you'll find is in most Linux de desktops when you get near a border it will do something called snapping, it will jump to the border so you know you've got a nice connection there, it's not overlapping but it's as close as possible that it can get to it. So I'm just going to get rid of all this advertising and whatnot here. Uh, that and get rid of that. 